Hello friends, welcome back. Want to secure your APIs using Azure AD? In this video, learn how to integrate Azure Active Directory authentication with Swagger UI for your APIs. I will walk you through configuring OAuth 2 authentication and setting up the Azure AD apps to secure your endpoints. This is perfect for developers who want to secure their APIs with Azure AD and Swagger in a few easy steps. So without delay, come let's get started. If you go to github.com under this repository, we already built a clean architecture for a to-do app using .NET Core 8 web API. So we're going to take that application and have this Azure AD integrated with it. Along with that, you'll see how Swagger works with that. Now go to portal.azure.com and here you can search either app registration or you can also search Azure Active Directory, which is nothing but Entra ID. Okay, so Microsoft Enter ID is same as Azure Active Directory, it's just a new name. So click on it. Now here in the left side panel, you will have a lot of things like manage and all of those things. Under manage, there is something called app registration. Now this app registration and if you try to search app registration, both are same, it's going to land on the same page. Now you have to click on new registration. Let's give it a name. The first registration is for our .NET Core Web API that we already built. So we need to first tell Azure that there are there is a app and the name of the app right now is to do app dash API dash dev. The reason why I gave it like this is for development purpose, right? We are running it from development purpose. Now choose the single tenant. Do not choose multi tenant because that's a different topic. Choose the single tenant and this is the API that is running. What we are going to do is if you look at this today, we have when we run this, there is no authentication. We're going to enable that. Now copy the URL, right? The Swagger URL that is running. And here under the redirect API, select web and give that URL here. Basically until port number, if you give, that should be sufficient because basically we are telling Azure Active Directory that when it authenticates, redirect to this place. Now. You might need to copy this client ID and the tenant ID from here. Even if you don't copy right now, it's okay. As we do, you can copy it later as well. Now go to expose an API and click on application ID URI. The one that gets generated is a unique one. So let's go with that. I saved it. Now click on add a scope. We need to create two scope because this application is used for this to do app. So I'm going to create app.read and app.write. Basically, this is just a scope. We can configure the scope in a different controllers or even to different API layers to restrict who can access what and if they have the scope only they can access just for that purpose. So for this demo purpose, let's say we have two scope app.read and app.write. Here on the left right side, whatever you're seeing, I'm just giving it some basic description. These things, whatever you give here, pay attention, whatever you give here is what will be prompted for the user when they try to sign in. Now, one scope is added. Similarly, I'm going to quickly add the second scope, app.write. I'm going to copy this and just paste it in all over. But who can consent? You can choose admin and users. Now, everything the same. You can give a meaningful description. Now, two scopes are added. So far, good. Now we are saying web API is having two scope that is exposing it. Now somebody has to be consumer, right? In our case, the Swagger UI itself is a consumer. Okay. I'm going to copy this name and I'm going to go to this original location, click on new registration. Now this registration is meant for our Swagger. The Swagger UI itself is treated as a separate single page application. Again, Swagger UI is trying to access the API. That's the concept. Okay. So choose single tenant. Pay attention here. Under the redirect URL, choose single page application. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to copy the Swagger URL, the complete URL, not just the port, but you're going to modify something here. Now, this localhost 7241, the port might be different for you, but if you copy my code, it will open the same port slash Swagger slash here is the important thing. You need to say OR2-redirect.html. Okay. This is very important. Now you click on register. 
we have registered the second application now this application which is swagger ui wants to consume the web api need permission so click on api permission and click on add a permission here go to this api my organization users it will have a lot of application that i did i will choose mine and select these two because we exposed it we chose it and we're giving a grant admin consent as well now you see after that everything becomes clean this is very important okay grant admin consent should be there and you're actually asking permission you're giving permission to this app now here comes the next set of configuration open up the code that i showed you in the github url and i'm going to copy paste the configuration here this configuration just has the instance which is login.microsoftonline.com we need to fill up this client id tenant id swagger client id and scope of course we did two scopes so i'm having app.read and app.write read permission scope should basically i'm i'm saying whoever write whoever has access to write is equivalent of having read access also so that's what you have see those two there now i'm going to go to the swagger ui overview page copy the client id and paste it here okay similarly i'm going to go back to this application and choose the to do app web api that we registered here go to overview copy the client id copy the tenant id and paste it in the respective place this is very important even if you miss one single step it's not going to work so client id tenant id two different app we kept it in the right place this configuration is done let's go to program.cs we need to do some more configuration in the swagger ui so that the swagger ui can able to contact the azure ad trigger the login process and all of those concepts right so what we have today just the default swagger like builder.swagger like build service.adswagger gen this is just the swagger integration service right swagger services integrated however we need to do some options here like we need to configure something here so i'm going to configure a couple of things the first thing is we will add a meaningful name for this swagger so i'm going to add a open api info i'm going to change this to the to do app because i just copied it from the old expense tracker app that's okay never mind so you give it a name this is for creating the document for swagger it just this name will come now two most important thing under this configuration let's minimize this so you will have a good picture here see now i'm adding add security definition here open ai see this this code you can copy paste literally but you can understand that there's a description name type flow open api oauth flow and then we are also checking this is a uh, we are configuring about the authorization flow so let's create a variable called configuration and assign the builder dot configuration object okay you i, I just preferred it so i am naming it like that so what we are going is we are configuring authorization url token url and scope all of these things that you see here has to be exactly same to make it better what i'm doing is i am picking up the tenant id and picking up the um, all the other configuration from the app settings so that we don't need to change the code here now this one that i am highlighting is the token endpoint it will it knows what to where to go and get the token it knows what to send what kind of scopes to send so here whatever i'm picking up here is the client id and our app our scope name was app dot three app dot right so i'm going to change this to a meaningful name to do app api to do app api on both read and write access okay so here what we did we have set up the authorization open api oauth flow configured authorization url token url scopes all are coming from here okay so that any environment you put this code will not change good now let's go this is service configuration right there's one more part here under the swagger generation itself so i will minimize this now let's paste the security requirement this is also important okay we are saying hey this is the what to flow and this is the scope that the application is required to have it 
again this configuration is coming from the app settings or json so that we don't change this code at any point of time irrespective of what environment it is good you can literally copy that and change the content alone now we will disable this so that even if you deploy to azure this worker will come okay so that's the idea but of course generally when it goes to production it won't be enabled but this is again for understanding purpose and demo purpose now this is called middleware right so app dot swagger ui is a middleware in this middleware we need to configure these four items we are configuring the endpoint let's change it to the current app name and what client id it is saying hey pick up this swagger's client id which is also configured in the app setting this client id is again pay attention this client id is swagger's client id okay after you configure these thing what i'm copy pasting is to secure the web api itself this is the regular uh, jwt based authentication schema that i'm setting up this is nothing to do with the swagger ui setting that we are doing we are basically securing the web api we need microsoft.identity.web package so i'm placing it here you can also go right click and say new get package and add it now if i add this and build whatever error was coming can be resolved so this error will resolve as soon as the package is getting installed package is almost close to done see now i can able to use this namespace the moment i use this namespace and get second one also will come this is from the identity.web now all that has went again this is the complete code along with some extra failure options like that you can debug it very nicely you can debug and see if something is not working okay so that even if you have to reach out to me you can tell me what error is coming anyway now if i click on authorize see authorize started coming you can choose the scope and you can say authorize but hold on if i choose authorize automatically it logged in right it's because i have already logged into portal.ac.com but let's log out click on one of the api what is happening let's see what is happening we missed something okay what i missed is i missed to enable the middleware that will have the authorization and authentication enabled so when the authorization is there i need to have the authentication also enabled which i missed it so first is authentication next is only authorization don't change this flow it has to be in the same flow authentication first authorization second now let's add the authorize attribute to all of our controller so it makes sense that whatever we're trying to protect is protected i'm going to add this authorize attribute here as well and here as well good now let's rerun this now let's see what happens without authorization i got 401 which is expected result it's protected now it says authentication failed 401 is authentication failed now if i click on this authorize select the scope click on authorize it automatically logged in because it has my session that's why it is able to get the token immediately with my credential i am getting the 200 okay let me log out and show you what happens authorize it is going to azure in just in milliseconds i got the token the access token if i copy this access token and go to jwt.ms i can decode this access token and show you what it is so i logged into my portal.ashi.com using learn smart coding at gmail.com that's my primary email id that's why in this token it says who i am okay but what happens if i copy and put it into a non-logged in session if i do the same thing because now this private cognito incognito browser doesn't know who i am it is going to assure and it is asking me to log in this is what is important okay so when you log in or any of the users who is inside your tenant logged in it will give you all of these things they need to prove who they are this is what called authentication process they're they're proving who they are after this Azure will give us the token and that's how this works okay now you're completely authenticated and use and Azure knows who you are who's coming to this user if I click on execute see I'm getting the data let me show you something interesting I'm going to keep a breakpoint here okay and I'll show you how you can check the claims but basically you need to write some little bit coding I can give you if you want just let me know in the comment section but if I put a breakpoint I will show you what happens right click go to quick watch 
this comes under the uses uses is an object which gets you know fulfilled with all of the data that user is coming in under the claims you can expand the result and you can see all of this let, let me make it big you see this all of the claims that you saw in jwt.ms is here so basically with this one you'll be able to find out who's the person who's coming in with the email id and all of the scopes you can do further restrictions to your apis or do any action that you want that is not part of this course video this is to make sure our web api is protected with azure ad authentication and how ui Swagger UI can be authenticated using Azure AD and you will be able to talk to your web API. That's the whole idea. So I think we are come to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section and I'm more than happy to help you. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next interesting video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!